Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Board Game Mechanics. I'm Katie, and with me, as always, is... Hey, everybody, what's going on? It is Jason. We are in the midst of summer, people. It is hot here in Ohio. Woof. Yeah, it's like going outside and then being in a hot blanket, covered in a hot blanket, and then being set on fire. That's what it feels like. (laughs) I mean, we're not... We are close to 90 today, but... We're not quite the hottest, but it always happens like right around when we end up going to church camp where you're like outside 90% of the time yeah, and it the, makes you want to die. That's Yeah. The time of year when all you can do is either sit in a little tiny cabin with AC or sit outside and just sweat. Yeah. Just sweat. Yeah. But I've been spending a lot of time inside working on my new job. Um, let me tell you, if you hit a midlife crisis and you're like, you know what? I think I should change careers. Maybe don't. <laughs> Maybe don't. Oh, wow, you're doing um, fine. It's fine. I just, uh, I, you know, I've been t- a teacher for 10 years. So I'm used to day one. Here's my syllabus. Here's my plan. Let's go. That that does not happen at my new government job. Day one, it's like, okay, welcome. Well, everything in the government takes like <laughs> 20 times as long. So maybe by day 20, it'll feel like day one. I just thought that was like a like a really bad stereotype, but it's kind of not. But I've met some really nice people, and my boss is really nice. And um, like, I think it's going to be really great. I've been having so much technical issues. Like, for a while, I couldn't access anything. Um, I had a computer, but I couldn't get to anything. And now I can, I can get to everything except for my email. It just doesn't believe that I exist in the directory. It's hilarious. Um, Which everyone else is like, oh, man, I wish I could just do that where no one could email me. I'm like, yeah. But when you first start, you got to email a bunch of people stuff. Yeah, I can't do that. So it has. It's been a learning curve. That's for sure. Watch a lot of training videos. I'm slightly paranoid now, but I am I am aware. I'm learning all kinds of things. So. It's at least keeping me inside in the air conditioning, I guess. There is that. It's true. That is always a plus. Yeah. And uh, I know we've kind of been going every other week. I'm hoping that maybe we can get back to a more regular schedule. I think we need to change our recording days. Um, Well, now with maybe you working from home, we might be able to start making something happen. We'll see. Yeah, I I doubt it. Because you don't. And then I have we go places day. at night. Uh, that's true. But our children are still at oh, home. Oh, yeah. I forgot about them. <laughs> uh, uh, the spawn. Still about a month till they go back to school. So, Nope. We're not we're, counting, though. We're not counting. Yeah. We're enjoying the summer, and I hope you guys are, too. But let's move on to some news, because I promised Jason I wouldn't belabor everything in this episode. So first up on news, it maybe almost doesn't seem like news because this is a reprint of a game that I have talked about on more than one occasion, but for so long, it was crazy expensive. Um, It was like a really a commodity item. It was out of print. And um, I feel like it's great to honor one of the designers who just passed away. And that game is Mystery of the Abbey. Oh uh, yeah, this is, is this Serge Legette? It's Bruno Fiduti and Serge Legette, yeah. Oh yeah, nice, nice. So the artwork on this new one is really cool. I mean, I'm not sure if um, my man Clemens Franz did the artwork on the last one. Uh, it sure does look like it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It does, but this one, this almost has the look of your your famous your favorite artist only the colors are are like ryan lockett colors but the look of the art reminds me of um Ooh, that box cover is fantastic right but if you look at like the cards of the monks they it reminds me of um pa- not what's his face oh this is the uh the i don't know if it's a guy or a girl but this is the um takaido artist Ah, it's, Na- and it's Naide or however you say their name. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Like I don't know how they make old, skinny, and fat guys look 
cute, but they they are like I really like the artwork in this. It's really nice. So it's it's like very similar to the original, which is a deduction based game, very clue esque, except there are, there's some wide openness to this and there are some different rules to Mr. The Abbey. So you're moving around the Abbey. They have like shaped monk ponds. And actually, I believe one of the up like the Kickstarter. No, it's an add on for twelve dollars. You can get unique monk meeples, which I also do kind of like. Because how often can you talk about your monk meeples? Um, you move and why them. Ar- would you? <laughs> <laughs> because you do have them. So you move them around, um, and when you encounter another monk in a room, you can ask them a question. But it's not just. It's not like with Clue where they hand you like some like. Was it this friar Franciscan? No, like you can ask them any question as long as the answer is not the name of a monk. You can even ask them where they're going. You can ask them about the cards in their hand. Um, You can ask, you know, who they've marked off. And this is like what I always say, the clue and guess who had a baby and it got religion. And that is Mr. The Abbey. Um, The one thing they did change was... There's custom dice? What are those custom dice for? Well, there's uh, well, you're rolling when you go into the uh, confessional, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, look, they look like little angels instead of the monks on the dice, which is hilarious. There's one picture I'm looking at where there's like some cardboard tokens. What's that all about? Do you know? Uh, are they shaped like... Um, there's like a plus oh. two, a plus four. That's like extra content. Oh, uh, I got you. Okay. Maybe for the Little Pilgrim's Chronicles expansion, I'm not sure. There's another new six-card expansion. And then they did take out the crypt, um, which was in the first, the original. And you could go to the crypt, which is it's really, like, way out of the way. Like, you have to determine, like, I'm not leaving the sanctuary. I'm, go- I'm going out to the crypt because you get a card that allows you to take a second action. Really powerful. Um, they have, like a sideboard with the crypt if you want to use the crypt um with a card and like these um wooden bone tokens <laughs> that you can grab which i think is hilarious um oh man they got a collectible hand signed postcard from bruno Feduti of that cover like it's nice it's nice uh the one thing it also doesn't have is it doesn't have a bell yeah that's had, stupid that's stupid lame it has a wooden token for the bell in our original, like you can literally ring the bell to start mass. It's really awesome. But everything about, else about this looks really cool. And I have always loved this game. Um, you can also go, there's different, there's like a, uh, the, conf- the confessorium is where you can draw a suspect card from the last person who visited there. The scriptorium gives you like a special card um, that allows you to do things. So does the biblioteca. In the Parlatorium, there's like extra cards there often. And if they're out, you can draw one from somebody else. And then you have the Capitulum, which allows you to make not just a revelation when you think you know who the murder is. You can actually make an accusation about like the monk who the mur- who is the murderer is a Franciscan or is bearded or is a Dominican. So you can get points that way as well as opposed to just I had to figure out the answer. Um I, this is such a good deduction game and I think it's great for people that aren't even good at de- deduction really because it allows you to like kind of get around those really basic deduction rules gives you a lot of info a lot of ways to ask it you're hearing it um, from everybody keeps everybody involved you can also take a vow of silence which really pisses people off and I love to do that it's it's such a good game. So I would check out Mystery of the Abbey. There's only four days left in this Kickstarter, but I just really want to talk about it because I really love this game. And I'm so glad it's getting a reprint. Um, and it is $40, which is incredibly reasonable. Thank you. I honestly think this price is maybe cheaper than the original one was. Mm. And that's crazy. Um, cause we actually got this game from cool stuff, I think right before it went out of print and I'm pretty sure it was maybe 40, $45. So it's at least on par, which better art in my opinion. Yeah, it is um, better art. Cool wooden minis instead of little plastic ponds. Uh, but honestly, 
it's the same game. It just has a little bit of a graphic design overhaul, but now it's available. So right. if you're tired of hearing us talk about it and not being able to play it, now's your chance. Oh, yeah, that's and that base pledge comes with uh, um, the exclusive new expansion deck and the crypt set, which Man, I think is really great. That's and for crazy. like $51, you get the Kickstarter exclusive expansion set, the crypt, the set of the unique meeples, and sleeves. I kind of do want to back this, but we had, we had the nice one, the old one. I like the old one. You love old and busted. Are you people hearing this? Are you hearing this right now? The old oh, one, I love the, the old one works just fine. You know that. I do know that. I played it a bunch. You want that signed postcard from Viduti? It's only fifty six dollars for the bundle with that. I, I don't need that. All I right. got I got Marty Wallace's signature right here on the bookshelf, and that's good enough for me. Okay, but everyone else heard that Jason wanted to go for the new hotness, the new pretty. You hey, know, listen. we got the old and busted. What? We all have a moment of weakness sometime. Okay. I thought your moment of weakness was the super deluxe edition of Wonderland's War. Yeah, that was like all my moments of weakness. That was madness. That's what that was yeah. Complete insanity. That was every moment of weakness that I've ever had. <laughs> right. All right. So check out Mystery Abbey. Abby. Um, I think it's the new, the reprint is through Mojito. Yeah. They also did uh, Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Yeah. It looks really good. The art's really pretty. The other one I talk about is straight up um, Jason's Wheelhouse because it is a game about music, although probably not his favorite kind of music. And this is called Ovation, a classical music game. So this is an engine building game. So you're a composer and you've got like, you've got a name. They all have names, which I think is interesting. Uh, So you take this classic composer and you get this little board, which is really cool. Um, And they're actual, like you can be Beethoven, you could be Hayden. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. Are they real uh, composers or like made up ones? I see some real names. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And so this little board is really cute because you've got the picture of the composer and then there's a little set of piano keys and the piano keys are actually tracks because in this you are tracking inspiration and there's different kinds of inspiration. There is joy, passion and sorrow because those are the main inspirations for music and you're actually using those as resources. So um, there are four. you can only take four, one of four actions on a turn. You can seek inspiration, which is going to move you up in those tracks, those resources. You can seek fortune, which is going to give you money. Uh, seek patronage, where you're going to get a patron. Um, or perform. And you perform a piece of music. So as you are like um, seeking patronage and things, you're, you're collecting cards. I think there's a couple. And there's different types of cards. They slide underneath your board by the action they represent. They have like a matching icon. And so as you perform and for... I think there's some other some cards and things that give you, you get these little music note tokens and there, I really hope there wouldn't, I didn't look at the pieces. I was just looking at how to play the game. And so when you've got cards queued up underneath an action, when you take that action, you can place music notes on the other cards to get the bonuses. You can trigger like chain actions that way, which is super cool. And to perform music, like you can perform just like chamber music or like a concert. Um, and that really allows you to then like you have to spend some of your points, like your joy, your passion, your sorrow, depending on what the piece of music calls for. Some of them require you to have instruments, which are from other other cards you've collected, which I think is really interesting. Each composer has a special ability. And when you perform, not only can you perform and you get things from it. You also, your neighbors on either side of you can come to your performance and it gives you those music tokens and it gives them like inspiration on one of those tracks, one of those types of resources they have when they listen to your symphony or your opera. It's really, it seems cool. The only thing I don't like about this is I think that the art is hokey. For something that is such, oh, they are wooden music note tokens. For something that is a classical music and you I really want to think like the Rococo look, it, it's it's almost it's not chibi, but it's cartoony. And so I'm kind of disappointed in that going that direction. 
but other people might like it. It's not ugly. It's just not what I would have chosen. It makes it look like a not serious game. That's that's what I see when I look at it. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is it? Like, why does it look like that? <laughs> why would you do that? And like the color choices, I think I would have done muted tones. I did, I, but it's still the the ideas behind it, the mechanics that it uses, the engine building, positive player interaction, really. Because if they come to your concert, it's good for you, but it's also good for them. You know, managing those resources, which are the different like passion or sorrow and things that you're gaining and, you know, drafting good cards that you can use later. It, I think it has some great possibilities. Um, and it's short. It's only f- says 40 to 60 minutes. So that that's pretty quick. But um, if you like music, if you like engine building, if you like cartoon art, check out Ovation. Uh, this is also on Kickstarter. There's seven days left on that um, campaign. And the base game is 48 bucks. Yeah, this is one that I've been eyeing because I, I love that piano track. And it's really cool. It is uh, cool. But $49 and not great art. And that Mr. The Abbey has fantastic art and is way cheaper. $9 cheaper. We know. already own that game, though, and we don't no, own I'm, this no, one. No, I'm not backing it. I'm just saying, oh. like, this is how I feel. This, mm-hmm. There's not more game in this, in my opinion, than there is in Mr. The Abbey. So there's no reason it should cost more. But Yeah, I mean, maybe. But it looks cool. I do love the so, theme, though. I, I like all music Yes, theme. I think that's a really good theme. I'm surprised it hasn't been used more, utilized more. And I would love to see this get reskinned later like what in my in my mind it needs to have an eagle griffin treatment i don't want to pay like 120 dollars for it but like they tend to do like very classically styled looks in their their games i mean Ooh, I don't, eagle griffin yeah well yeah because it's eno tool he has his own look <laughs> Right, I'd like to see Anno Tool maybe do this one and use like a muted color palette. You know, at- honestly, Clemens Franz art would look great on this. I'm not even kidding. That's around. true. I I totally agree. I mean, you know, I'll support my boy Clemens Franz. I would like to see a really ugly f- close up of Mozart's face in the box <laughs> with jacked up hands and fingers. Yeah, that's what we want. And and browns and oranges. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for on this one. No, it, I think it would actually look really good. I think so too. So, yeah, that's uh, what I have for news this week. All right. So let's talk about some games that we played. And we have been, well, since we've been going every couple weeks, we've had more opportunities to play some games, which is nice. So we have more stuff that we're able to talk about. So the first game we're going to talk about is actually a game we picked up at Origins. And it's from well, one of my favorite publishers. I think Katie's pretty cool with them, too. I'm and a big fan. If I I'm going to say it like right. Katie's kids board table games. Kids. <laughs> you can't even Table say it. game. Kids table board games. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And the I game, love them. I do. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And the game is called Haunt the House. And this is one of the like three that we don't own. The only big box one that we don't own. That we didn't. Now but, we yeah. do. Yeah, that we didn't own. Now we own it. We still don't know Maple Valley, but we backed it. It'll be here. And Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we can't have that yet. But in this game, what you're doing is you're taking on the role of a ghost. It plays one. uh, I'm not sure if it's a single player game, but it definitely plays two to five players. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to scare these ghost hunters out of this haunted house. And what that means is all of these ghost hunters are afraid of like different sounds. There's like creaks and moans and thumps. And oh. or they get chills, like cold chills, because the ghost is around. <laughs> and the way this game works is on your turn, you're either going to play some cards either above the room that match the icon that the ghost hunter is scared of, and you get a special ability in the room. Or you're going to put a card face down below the room, possibly bluffing that somebody can use on a later turn to do a boo action. So the next thing you can do is you can do a boo action. And what that means boo. is you're going to say boo. And you think that you're, there's going to be enough cards face up and face down to meet the requirements to scare this ghost hunter out of the room. So say 
the ghost hunter needs three book icons and we'll say two moans. So it needs five cards total. I look at this one room. There's two moans face up. There's four cards face down. I was like, okay, there's six cards. I have a good possibility. Then you reveal all the cards below. And if enough of those cards that are revealed make you have the icons that you need to match, you scare away the ghost hunter, you get some points and all that stuff. And anybody who contributed an accurate uh, card, so a moan or a book, would either get a point or if you're playing the advanced version, a couple phantom cards and keep one. And if you, you don't have enough icons in the, bo- in the bottom and the top, you fail your boo and you get nothing and all the cards go away and you start it over. Boo. That's effectively the game. You're playing cards trying to scare these ghost hunters. If you're playing with the phantoms, they give you an extra action you can do that does some really cool stuff. And you're just trying to be the first player to, I think, get four ghost hunters in a higher than two-player game. And then whoever has most points after all that is said and done as a winner. It's super simple. It's It has nice art, really nice production because it's kid table board games. But it's probably, as far as all the games that we have from them, the most kid oriented i would say it's it's simpler than the other ones it can really be stripped down and just you can play it with kids and anybody can play this and just have fun so i like it it's not my favorite one of theirs probably the least favorite one that we own but i do enjoy it i'll play it whenever anybody wants to it's it's a good time so that's hot the house how you feel about this one it's good and really by least favorite i just mean that everything else is so good correct this one is just is light um, but it's still really good. Like it, it's fun. It's got really uh, obvi- like Jason mentioned. The production quality is awesome. The artwork is awesome. It's what you expect from kids table board games. Um, it, it's just it's just a good time. Like it's a good time. Um, we played it with my family, and everyone, you know, the youngest in the group was like thirty five or something. I think. Um, and it was still really fun. It's, it's a, a, I think a really interesting idea that, oh, you're trying to scare. And then it's also, once you get into it, you're like, oh, this is so simple. And you're like, wait. But like, we were all just like bluffing the crap out of each other. And then no one was getting any ghost hunters and that made the game go on longer. So then you're like, oh, maybe we should go about this differently. And, you know, we use the ghouls, phantoms phantoms the phantoms and that adds like a whole new element because they can stop people from booing until the next turn they can stop people from playing cards face up and using the powers like they are really powerful and really interesting um and can swing and change things so uh, there is a lot to this game just for being kids game also the little point markers are like little skulls they glow in the dark it's amazing yeah which is a nice touch but how often are you going to play a game in the dark I know, but I don't even care. <laughs> like, it's really cool. Yeah. I think the other um, the other really interesting thing is it's like, how would I, if I were to describe this game, if people have played, we just got that Don't Go In There game, which we talked about in the podcast before that our friend Mike um, got, and we're like, we have to get this, which is, you know, set collection type thing, Haunted House theme-esque. This is like that game for kids, basically. Yeah, I mean it's it's barely lighter than that one because that one's pretty light too. But right, right. But yeah, it's I I really enjoyed it. I I'm definitely glad we picked it up for sure. Well, the nice thing is now we have another game for the Halloween time, so that that works. This is true. All right, so next we played a game that we've had on the shelf for a while that I never want to get back off the shelf because I didn't want to relearn it. So um, our friend Chris and Amy were over and uh, Chris relearned it and. We played it again, and it's called Abyss. And this is a Bruno Catala game. Has a terrible box, uh, terrible. terrible, terrible box art. But once you get inside of it, the art looks really good. <laughs> Just that box is not, uh, not good. But this is a set collection, push your luck, contract fulfillment game. Kind of, you're trying to collect these little, these little mini cards of five different colors, valued one through five, and then you're going to be spending these cards to obtain these lords that are going to give you special abilities and points, possibly keys. Uh, And then you're going to get these locations once you have three keys that are going to help you score in other ways as well. Uh, The push your luck comes in a little bit when you're trying to get the little mini cards. You can flip a card 
you get to do an auction. Basically, somebody can buy it from you for some pearls. Uh, if people keep buying, eventually there's going to be, you can just keep flipping until either you hit the end of the track, you get a pearl, but you're stuck with that card, or you can fight a monster that shows up. You can push your luck and ignore the monster. It makes the reward a little bit better. But eventually, if it hits the fifth spot, you got to fight it and all that kind of thing. It's a, it's a really simple game to play. I still had a good time. I forgot that I, how much I did like this game. I just wish the box didn't look so terrible. Even Clements Franz need to hit that box up. For real. Um, but yeah, it's a, a fun game. It's I don't maybe the theme turns people off because I don't know why it's it's got everything like a lot of other Bruno Cantala games that people dig, but this one doesn't get talked about a ton. But I dig it. So how do you feel about Abyss this time? Yeah, it's good, and I and I've thought I always thought it's good, but again, this is one because I am judgy. McJudgerton about the outside of games and it's got this big ugly face on it right in the front and it's named Abyss and everything's dark colors and stuff on the outside of the box to me that says like dungeon crawl fighting possibly area control no thank you all things Katie hates but inside the artwork is really pretty on the cards on the lords that you use and just it's like oh Abyss you mean like in the deep ocean. Someone needs to reset. I don't even, I don't want Clemens Franz to hit this. I want, um, Weberson Santiago. Weberson Santiago, sure. Or uh, actually, Nayada, um, yeah, Naide, or however you say that. Yeah, yeah. It needs, it needs a softness to it because it's not that kind of game at all. Like, it's just a really lovely game. With some push your luck, it's fun moving the cards around, set collection type stuff. It's just a good time, and it's so sad that the box itself is such a turn off. Like it does, the outside does not match the inside. Um, yeah, but it, it's so. This game is so worth it. I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, I also heard someone uh, someone suggested that we should find the Abyss Conspiracy, a little card game. They said it's even better. So. Hmm. I may have to check that out. I'd also be happy to have any expansions for this, but good night. That's true. They're crazy. One of them's crazy expensive. The other one is usually available, but apparently it's not that good. <laughs> Dang it. Of course. Yeah, the good one's out of print. Hard to find. Hmm. All right. So the last game we're going to talk about is it's a new Kickstarter delivery. Not technically out yet, I don't think. I think it's coming out at Gen Con. Maybe. But it's from Keymaster, and it's called Chicken! Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I just put this on here because I wanted to say that because it's funny. I know, because you think you're hilarious. <laughs> but this I game... Got, I got news. No. <laughs> this not. game is the simplest game that I've probably played in, I don't know, a couple years Ever. for sure. And it's a Scott Alms game, you know, the tiny epic guy. He's done all those those games. And in this game, what you're doing is you are rolling... You're going to start out rolling four of these white dice, and it's a race to get to 25 points. So what you're doing is you're going to roll the dice. Any eggs that you roll turn into the next color of dice up, so it means you're going to be able to roll more dice. Any foxes that you roll stay. Any chickens that you roll stay. And if at any point you roll three foxes, you bust. Now, you get one roll, and then you get one re-roll, and then you're done. So you either take what you get in your first, or you roll again. That's it. And that's a whole entire game. You're rolling, trying to get eggs, hoping that you can roll a bunch of chickens so you can hit 25 points for everybody else. Uh, there's nothing else. That's it. The board is kind of cool. It's a little, like, fabric with crazy funky colors on it. And the player pieces are cool. There's a poop piece that has some flies buzzing around. So, uh, you know, I got to play that one. Of course he does. Yeah. But the dice are nice. They're cool custom dice. I like the funky colors. It comes in a weird, like canister looks like one of those canisters you open up and snakes pop out um, <laughs> yeah the, the peanut brittle ones yeah yeah but yeah it it's it's not my favorite game in the world uh this is our buddy brandon's game i think they backed it on kickstarter it's fine if someone wants to play it i'll play it but i've played it twice now and that's probably and once more than life. i probably should have played it but yeah that's chicken how do you feel about chicken it was okay I mean, played with my family after we played it with Brad and Josie. And my family was like, well, I mean, you don't have to think. 
And <laughs> that is true. true. They did say that. <laughs> that that is that is the truth. Well, it takes no more than twenty minutes too, so that is pretty nice. Right. So it's a quick little filler. If you like Chuck and Dice, you can play this with kids too. It's just push your luck. Um, the dice are cool. The custom dice are cool. So there's that. Yeah, the dice are um, really nice. They're really nice dice. But yeah, I mean, I guess if you don't want to think, yeah, it's great. I don't really care. I don't have a love for chickens either. So it's not like I'm like, oh, yeah, I love chickens. Let's play a game about chickens. Eh. <laughs> That's true. The best part is the poop piece. That's it. Uh, I'm always the cat for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. The cat is kind of cute. Thanks. Yeah, I just, I, I just don't. It's a key master game. And I feel like compared to Parks, oh my gosh. Caper. Yeah, they- yeah. And can't be creatures. This one is just so it's far wah, down the wah, down the wah. ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Like, pa- Parks is fantastic. Can't be creatures is fantastic. Caper's amazing. And then you have chicken and it's just not that good. Yeah, it is a it, it is a disappointment compared to those. But I guess if I didn't know it compared to those, like the design style on the, the canister and the stuff is very um keymaster. But uh, that's where the similarities end. Yeah, and again, I'm not trying to yuck anyone's yum. If you like right, this right. game, that's fine. It's just not necessarily my thing. Yep. Me All right, so those are the games we played. We'll end that negativity and go into some good stuff. Absolutely. All right, so many moons ago, since it takes us forever, apparently, now to release episodes. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to be better, guys. I'm the problem. I know it. You'll remember before we started talking about Origins, there was a little series we were doing about games every gamer should own. And we've kind of broken them down um, by mechan- like main mechanic. So we're looking at games that are fairly easy to come by that aren't overwhelmingly difficult although jason's first one i think is a little rough yeah it's 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 the heaviest one that i've picked i think yeah um but we we tried to make sure we pick ones that you could get uh that you could learn and that you could teach very easily um and so today we're going to tackle pick up and deliver tile laying contract fulfillment set collection and bluffing so jace won't you start us off with your pick up and deliver choice for a game every gamer should probably own. All right. So honestly, we talked about this game, uh, another game last night that I would like to have on my list if it was available. And that is Black Fleet. That would have probably been my choice. But since that game is criminally hard to find and super expensive, yeah. I have picked Venice from Brain Crack Games. And this is, it's going to be the heaviest one that I've talked about, period, on these lists. But it, this is a game where you are a gondola pilot. I don't know. Gondola driver. Gondolier. Oh, yeah. Gondolier. Yeah. I was like, I can't think of the word. And what you're doing is you are drive, navigating your gondola with your gondolier <laughs> through these waterways to go past these buildings where you have people set up. They're going to throw goods into your boat, and you're trying to deliver certain colors of goods to different locations to score points. Uh, you're also trying to get people at these locations. You let them stay there for a long time. It makes it better when your boat passes by these locations. But if you also pass by another player's boat, you can get a little intrigue. Um, you like some night letters or something. I don't know. And if you have too much intrigue at the end of the game, meaning more than every other player, you automatically lose. Love that. But yeah, this is uh, there's a lot more to it. But the gist of it is you're trying to pick up some cubes and deliver them other places to score points. It's a good game. It's got really cool production. There's an expansion that I'd love to try that we don't have yet, but I do enjoy this game. It might be, it's not hard to find. You can get it on like regular game stores, but it's not going to be as accessible to learn and to teach as some of the others. So just keep that in mind. But it's a cool theme, really nice bits and stuff, and fun pickup and deliver. So my first one for pickup and deliver is Venice. Yeah, I was thinking, ooh, this is a little, maybe a little out of reach. So mine is not, um, but it's still a really good game. And we played it not that long ago. And I was like, yeah, man, this is why I really like this game. And that game is Taxi Derby. Now, Jason did say you can get this off of the publisher's website. Yeah, I think that's the only place I've ever seen it right now. 
which I couldn't tell you who the publisher is, but apparently if you f- look it up, you can find out. Skipshot Games. Oh, sure. You know, old Skipshot. I don't. But in Taxi Derby, you are a taxi driver. And so you are a cruiser on the streets, picking up passengers, dropping them off where they want to be. But your passengers, uh, are they going to want certain upgrades from the taxi? You know, in the world of, um, I don't even know the names of the services. Uber and Lyft. Yep. There you go. <laughs> it's obvious I don't live in a place where we use those, like a city. Um you got to pimp out your taxi to get people to ride with you. So there are upgrades you can get to your taxi. You also can only move so far. Um, but if you want to get that, get that fare, you can speed. But there is a cop car that moves around the board, could give you a ticket. Um, each There's special player powers for each of the taxi drivers. We also, I don't know if it's a deluxe or something, but there's special shaped cars that you can choose, which is pretty awesome. I love that. Yep. Is that an upgrade or? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I think the deluxe upgrades are like metal coins and the fancy cars. That's it. Yeah, um, it's it's not that difficult. It's everyone's pretty like okay, yeah. I pick up passengers, drop off passengers. Not that hard. Um, but how far can I go? Where's the cop going to come in? How can I get up, pick up the fares that I want? Do I need to get the upgrades? You know, money's tight. It's just, it's a really fun pick up and deliver game. I really like it. So that's my choice, Taxi Derby. All right. So up next on the list, we have tile laying. And mine's not a traditional tile layer, but there is some tiles and they are being laid down on a board. And also this game, (laughs) I'm not good at following rules. This game is hard to find as well. I just was thinking, I don't think you can find this one. (laughs) So I'm sorry. My my list is terrible. I think you need to choose a new one. Maybe I should go first. No, I'm sticking with it. I'm going with this. Are you serious? Yeah, I am. I've already broken the rules, so we'll stay with it. Oh my gosh. You better think of something while I talk about mine and come back with a good second option. All right. So the first one that I, I like that I want to be on my list, but it's not accessible. And I'll talk about one that's accessible that I like when Katie's done. And mine is Zularetto. And this is a game about um, drafting tiles, different types of animals, and putting them in this little, I think it's, it looks like a farm, really, but it's a zoo. It's and a you're dra- trying. This is a drafting game. What's wrong with you? You're taking the tiles and you're laying them on your board. I don't necessarily like tile laying games. So that's why I didn't put the, any down here, really. But I'm sticking to my guns. Leave me be. It's already wrong. I'm going to keep being wrong. Okay. So for tile laying, back to that. In Zularetto, you're drafting tiles, and you're taking those tiles, and you're laying them down on your... See? See what I did there? Laying them down in your zoo board with like animals in each type of pin, and you're trying to get as many of that certain type as the pin holds to score points. Uh, If you take tiles that you can't fit in a pin, you can put them in your barn, but you will lose points based on each type of species that you have in that barn. Also, if you draft a male tile and a female animal tile of the same species, once per game, they will have an offspring, a cute little baby tile that will go into your pin and help you fill it up. Um, that's the gist of the game. We have a couple of, or one expansion at least we haven't tried yet, but it's super simple, it's super fun, and as far as tile laying games go, it's not really a tile laying game, I'll give you that, but there are tiles that you're not playing them down, so I, put, I counted it, so... Zularetto, that's mine, and I'll come up with a better one while Katie's talking about hers. I mean, we're just pretty okay, but you're bringing it down to mediocre, man. Okay, so my <laughs> game, I'm pretty sure you can find. I guess I didn't double check that, but yes, this, it is available. This game is so beautiful. I, this, I believe, this is Vincent to trade art. Is that, that is right? correct. Yes. Ha! Look at me go. Uh, and that game is 100 Chori. So obviously I love this game because it's Japanese themed and it's really pretty. But in the 100 Chori, you are laying out paths in a Japanese garden. Already. I'm in, right? Um, but you score points by connecting these different like garden items. Sometimes it's like a fountain. Sometimes it's like Inari statues, um, certain kinds of rocks. So you're trying to, you will score the quickest path from one item to the next, whatever is the closest. Uh, You score points by passing through Tory gates. Uh, I guess you're not always scoring points. You get, you get um, items. Items, yeah. 
um, which are like whatever you're using to kind of measure the distance in. You get these little tokens for that. You can get other ones um, for different colored Tory gates. You're trying to collect them as much as, as to collect as many of them as you can, because those will turn into points. Uh, there also are some little special characters that uh, will will g- give you special powers, so allow you kind of break some of the rules to help you do better at the point scoring. I really think I'm terrible at this game, but I find it a really interesting puzzle. It's challenging. I also don't know that I love tiling, but I really enjoy it here. Like I really enjoy it a lot, actually. Um, and we just got an expansion for it, which we haven't played. And I keep trying to get it played, and it just hasn't come out yet. Um, and honestly, since I made this list a couple weeks ago, I would be tempted to add, f- to use Finest Fish, if that's a tiling game. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I could work, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I do, I, I love this trade art, I love Asian themed, I love pretty games, so the 100 Tori is definitely my choice for tiling, very accessible, um, once you explain the scoring, like, just giving people, like, they, you have two tiles, you play one. Like, that's really simple. And then showing them, like, okay, you can pick this this item in the garden to this item or this item to this item and then show them the scoring. It, it's pretty easy to catch on. And then it's just you kind of puzzling out where you want to put your tiles. It's it's really good. So my tile laying choice, which is actual tile laying and actually available, though 100 Tory. All right. So looking around while you were talking, I think another tile game that I do really want, a tile game that is actually a tile game that I really like, is Meeple Land. I was thinking about that one while I was talking. So pretend like I didn't say Zularetto, although it still is a great game. Meeple Land is a game where you are running an amusement park and you're trying to get these different attractions in there and they're all different shaped tiles. And then you're trying to get meeples, the people, to come on the bus to visit your rides. Certain rides want certain colored meeples to ride on them, like Thrill Seekers or whatever. And then you're just trying to score the most points by having the best park. That's it. So it is actually a tile land game, and I will go with that one if that makes you feel a little bit better. Uh, that is better. And also it's available as well. Yeah. So you at least hit the basic, the very basic criteria <laughs> that I set out. Yeah, I, I'm not good at following rules. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All okay, right. Tr- let's try again with contract <laughs> fulfillment. Okay, I think this one qualifies. We'll see. Uh, so this next game is actually, I think, I think it's available in America now. I'm, I'm like 98% <laughs> sure. So I'll, I'll look it up while you're talking. Well, Chris got it and now we have it. So clearly it was in America at some point. Okay. Uh, and this game is called bad company. And this is a game where you are running a gang and it, all those gang members represent number a number of a pair of dice so like two through 12 and what you're trying to do is you are trying to get these different icons that the gang members provide gloves flashlights masks and um steering wheels something else and you're trying to use those icons that they provide to put onto these heist cards once you get enough of the icons covered up you have scored the card it's going to give you like a gold bar it could give you diamonds um paintings or money bags and then you're trying to just score as many points as you can by completing those contracts there's a little more to it here and in this car you're trying to run away from the cops if the cop gets past you it you know you can lose negative points at the end of the game but it's just rolling dice collecting these little tokens that you're going to cover up on these cards to try to complete as many heists as you can to score points that's it it's really fun uh it's like space base or machi Koro if you played any of those or valeria car kingdoms but with a cool gangster theme which is kind of what wins me over for this because i think the theme is cool and i'm all about theme so my contract fulfillment right. game is bad company yes you can find this on amazon it's 50 dollars, which i feel is a little outrageous yeah that's a lot problem maybe it's just not as of i don't know it's yeah, not it's as many not really that too. much cheaper anywhere else so i was like okay but if you got 50 bucks and you like the theme i say go for it yeah uh, that actually is contract fulfillment. Mine is probably the granddaddy, the OG of contract fulfillments. Um, and for good reason. And that is Lords of Waterdeep. 
you can't get any more basic contract fulfillment than this. And the thing is, like, we've played all kinds of games. You all know that. Tried all kinds of games. This still holds up. Absolutely still holds up. And people are like, oh, it's Dungeons and Dragons themed. Don't ever say that to anyone. I will slap you upside the head. Because I've had people be like, oh, I don't. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? The name Waterdeep. There are like some classes of D and D characters. You don't know that. If you don't know that, if you don't know about owl bears, doesn't matter. You don't need to. You go to a spot. You get the stuff. You fulfill the contract. The end. Um, but it's it, it's such a good game. Um, vying for those spots. There are lots of I multiple paths to victory absolutely based on who your lord is what they want how you want to work the board um we have skull skull uh, degrees of skullport, skullport so. <laughs> uh, scoundrels of skullport scoundrels of skullport i was like i forget what it skullport. is actually <laughs> The expansion, uh, Jason loves it. You get corruption, but you get really good stuff. And then he ultimately loses every <laughs> time. Because you lose a pile of points with all those skulls. Well, that's the thing is I get skulls, but then I get rid of them. <laughs> I just like hold on to their fun. There are also cards that make them positive. But no, no, no. He doesn't do that. <laughs> He's just... like, that's future Jason's problem. And then suddenly future Jason is at scoring round yeah. and he loses 50 points. Future Jason's not good at board games. No, but present Jason does not help out future Jason either. No, he does not. It is a terribly vicious cycle, um, but it is a good expansion. Um, add some cool stuff to it, but just the base game is is quality. It is a quality contract fulfillment game. It's it looks intimidating because it's like a big a board. I see, says to myself, it's a big old board. Um. But honestly, it's like the iconography is real straightforward. Um, and you just fulfill, put the cubes on the contract. That's it. Uh, it's just it's just classic. It's good. So my contract fulfillment choice, Lords of Waterdeep. And this is one you should definitely buy because it was on my work replacement list. So uh, we've it, it has a bunch of itches that it scratches. It's so. available, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how available the expansions are, but the base game you can find. Okay. Okay. I got scared there. I was like, dang it. I harped on Jason so bad. If this one freaking is out of stock, I'm going to hate myself. I mean, I guess. I haven't looked it up in a long time, but last time I looked it up, it was it was available. I, I mean, I saw it at our store the other day because I keep... Yeah, that's true. I'm looking for Champions of Midgard for my cousin, but instead I keep seeing Lords of Waterdeep. Also good. Right, yeah. All right, so next up is Set Collection which kind of could be Lords of Waterdeep too, because it has some of that. But um, the one that I picked is actually, it's a Phil Walker Harding game. I'm a big fan. And it's called Archaeology, the New Expedition. There is an older version of it called Archaeology, but this is the newer one. And what this game is, is it is a game where you're trying to collect different types of artifacts to get a certain number of them, to put them on display in your museum, to score points. So, for example, like, say I score the King Tut mask or Ancient mask, whatever. I don't know what it's called. And it says one of them is worth five points, but two of them is worth 30. I want to try to get two of them and put them on display before I put the one on display. Because once you put it on display, you can't add the other one to it. So you're kind of pushing your luck a little bit, holding stuff, trying to avoid uh, sandstorms and thieves until you can get the cards that you need to put the stuff on display. There's also a monument that's in play every round where it will let you dig through some piles of cards and hopefully get what you need and all that kind of stuff. It's just a draw a card, play a card type of game, but it's really fun and I like it a ton. It's like 20 bucks. It just came back in print not that long ago, so it is available and it's super accessible. Anybody can play this. If you played any type of old card game, it has that kind of feel to it, like a rummy type of thing. It has that kind of vibe. It's easy to teach and explain, so... I highly recommend um, Archaeology, the New Expedition, my set collection game. I think I've only played this once, and I thought it was really hard, and I didn't like it. That's because I couldn't win it, and it was irritating to me. It can be irritating. It can, because it's a lot of luck, and you can really get boned by some of those sandstorms, too. But, yeah. if Oh, no way. I'm thinking a different game. (laughs) I'm mixing this up with the one that, like, oh, if I put this up, if I put this up in a collection, you can't unless you have one more. 
Oh yeah, we... that's um, artifacts. Okay, okay. So artifacts one I don't like. I do like this one. This one's good. <laughs> I take back everything I said. And also, I looked up Lords of Water Deep. You can get it on Amazon for thirty five dollars. Wow, that's a deal. That's a deal. That's less than what we paid for it when we bought it like 10 years ago. <laughs> Probably, actually. <laughs> anyway, my set collection is an oldie but a goodie. Much like Lords of Waterdeep, this is a granddaddy, I think, of like player interaction, card games. And this has gone over like gangbusters with all kinds of groups. And that game is Bonanza. Who knew planting beans could be so great? Um, so in Bonanza, you are planting beans in fields, and so you're collecting sets of specific types of beans. Uh, soy beans, chili beans, green beans, um, cocoa beans, coffee beans, etc. Uh, so but you can only play cards out of your hand in the order they're in your hand. So you may not be able to c- complete as much of a set as you wanted, but you also can trade on other people's turns. It is a madhouse, man, trying to trade, get the stuff you want, get the crap out of your hand you don't want. Um, there's a bunch of expansions for this, too. We played with a couple of them that have, like, baby beans and lady beans and pirate beans. and Yeah, we have some we haven't even played yet, the gangsters. Gangsta beans, Yeah. It's just, uh, it's a good game. I mean, our uh, our friend who poops and everything, he even liked it. He and his wife were super into it. it was very exciting. I was like, oh my gosh, they like a freaking game. I can't believe this. Like, my mind is blown. Um, but it's because it's it's just, it's good. It's not, it's not difficult on your turn. I plant one bean or two. I turn over two beans to the pile. I have to do something with them. Then trading happens. So everyone's always engaged on everyone's turn. Um, you're looking at beans, like looking at what's coming out, thinking ahead to your hand. Um, it's just a really great game. So Bonanza is my set collection choice. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a dice version too. Like really? there's a new flower version that's coming out. If you don't want to yeah, play with the beans, I kind of want that because the beans are ugly. I like it. They're they're funny beans. You you would. You would. <laughs> I do like it. It looks so old and crusty. I love it. All right. So the last one we're going to talk about is bluffing. And there are a lot of games that do bluffing. But sometimes it's... And you don't like most of them. I don't like most of them. That's true. So there's like maybe three or four that I even want to talk about. And I'm going to go back to one that was early on that we played. Katie played it before me. Uh, and it's probably the a classic now at this point, I would say, and mm-hmm. it's called bang. And I'm actually going to say the, the card game or the dice game, similar kind of vibes. The dice game is faster. The card game is a deeper game, I think, but in bang, what you're doing, whether it's a card or dice, someone's going to be the sheriff and they're going to be, everybody's going to know who that person is with the role. And then other players are going to have roles face down, depending on the number of players will determine what additional roles are in there. There's going to be deputies, outlaws, and then, a renegade or a couple renegades, depending on the number of players. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to meet your win condition and figure out who other people are so you can play accordingly. So the sheriff has to kill basically all the outlaws and the renegade to win. If they do that, the sheriff and the deputies win. If the outlaw kills the sheriff, they win pretty easy. If the renegade is the last person alive, and the person who died just before them was the sheriff, they win. That's a little bit harder, but it's possible. But you don't know who anybody is, so you're trying to figure out who's shooting who with the cards or the dice, uh, how they're playing, who they're defending, all that kind of thing. Maybe trying to throw some people off by playing a little recklessly at a time so they don't figure out who you are. Um, Yeah, it's just a great game, either version. I probably like the card game a little bit better, but either version is fun, good time, and just... I'd say maybe one of the granddaddies of bluffing hidden role games, and that is Bang. Yep. I played this game in college. It's real fun. It's still something that's really, really great. Uh, something I like to pull out. We play this a lot, actually. And people get a kick out of it. That that Wild West theme just does really go over well. Um, my 
choice for bluffing was difficult because I actually really enjoy bluffing games. I love lying to people. It's really fun for me. Um, I like making people believe me with my wide, innocent eyes and chunky baby-like cheeks and then stab them in the back. It's my favorite thing. But I wanted to go really classic with this one because there is a reason this is like a Dice Tower Essentials. That's fine. You can like it for that reason. But it is a good game. If you're talking about bluffing, um, it has a cool companion app with fun noises and stuff. And Jason hates this game, which makes me sad because I I think I didn't want to choose it at first because he hadn't played it for so long. And that game is Sheriff Nottingham. So in Sheriff Nottingham, you are leaving the city no going into the city uh you're smuggling something either in or out of the city yeah i'm not i don't sure. know if you're going in or out <laughs> either way you're passing through the gate of the city and there are some goods that you are allowed to take but there are some contraband goods that you are not allowed to take so you are hiding things in like an you're putting cards in an envelope um different types of goods and then you declare your goods much like you do anywhere on the world when you're traveling. Now, people take turns being the sheriff and they can believe you or they can, uh, you can offer them a bribe. They can request a bribe or they can just demand that you show them all your goods. Obviously, if you're caught with contraband, bad news. But if they think you're lying and you're not, oh, they get to give you stuff. And uh, the contraband items are always worth more points but you honestly can play this game and not lie at all i mean really uh but it is one of those where it's like okay what do i know about people do i trust them they seem like they're lying um but the app has like funny voices and things and i i like the artwork on it actually um well the, the version we have has good art they reprinted it and it doesn't look as good Oh, sorry. I don't know about the new, the new version. The old version's great. Maybe you can find a used copy somewhere. I would if I were you. But but this is super available. Like I'm pretty sure I saw it at Target the other day. Yeah, it's my, it's it's everywhere. My home away from home, Target. Uh, so it it's it is a really good classic bluffing game. It's and and very simple. Like you can play this with kids for sure. Oh my gosh! Why is it one hundred and forty dollars on Amazon right now? Oh, maybe it's not available. Maybe someone's breaking the rules. You shut up. There's a uh, there's one a like new version of the Geek Market for twenty five dollars. Oh, there's well, yeah, a twenty. If, if you're using the a, Geek Market, anything's available. There's a twenty. That's not true at all, and you know it. Except like, for uh, that Grim game, you can find everything else on there. There's like fifty copies on eBay or on the geek market i'm i'm looking it up I'm, no it's I'm, it's 25 dollars on amazon the new version and I, target the new one i just looked and it didn't i just googled uh sheriff of nottingham oh i see game. it it's the old version the arcane wonders version oh, is yeah, yeah. That one's out of yeah. Print. yeah yeah i was like but, what the heck it's on special offer at target for 24 dollars yeah, run new, don't walk the new one's the same game it just has different art and it's from Simon instead of arcane wonders yeah, the art's not as good, but it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, so it's 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 a good game. It's pretty easy um, to teach bluffing. Actually, Haunt the House could go on this bluffing category as well. That's true. I was thinking about that when I was looking through the list. But it's a solid, solid game. So, yes, my choice for bluffing, there are so many, but I chose Sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, I would play this game more, but it's basically the players playing each other, and there's really no game in there. So... I don't, those are not games that I enjoy that much where you're just, I could be telling you the truth every single time, but you check my bag just because that's, uh, that's irritating to me. So that's why I don't want to play a bunch of games like this Hmm. or I could be lying or, you know, Brandon lying every single time. No one checks his bag. Well, everybody would check his bag as he says. Yeah, I was like, I he's not a good example. Every but time. He's somebody else sus. lies every single time and they let their bag go through. It's like, it's just, come on. It's just annoying. Okay. But for other people, they might like this game. So, yeah. Um, So those are our choices for Pick Up and Deliver, Tile Laying, even though Jason fooled that one up, Uh, Contract Fulfillment, (laughs) Set Collection, and Bluffing. I'm sure y'all 
can find some uh, maybe better choices than Jason. So feel free I to tell us. I fixed my one, okay? <laughs> feel free to tell us on any of our socials. Um, we also love looking for new games, games that are easy to teach, um, easy to get to the table. Absolutely. Um, so hit us up on any one of those things. Thank you for being patient with us. We've kind of done this every other week format. I'm still hoping to try to get into the groove of every week, but that may be after this summer is over. Yeah, we got to get those kids. I, I have nothing else school. to say. Do you have any stupid comments to make now? I see. What Are did you, you t- say, Crick? You! I said, yeah, we got to get those kids in school. That's what I said. Oh, okay. I didn't hear then, that. Then I heard you talking, but I didn't hear you coming through my phone. And it just became a big ordeal. And then you, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was a big cluster. All right, so I think that's it for us this week. I've been Katie. And I'm Jason. Keep gaming, everybody. Keep gaming. I think you, like, dropped the call or something there for a second. Yeah.